live from the CK12 studios in beautiful Palo Alto, California. It's community contributed non-STEM content on CK12 webinar. My name is Carl and I'm a member of the CK12 team and I'll be joined today by Lindsay and we'll be showing you all about how to create non-STEM content here on CK12. Hi everybody, I'm Lindsay. Um, before working with CK12, I taught high school English and video production for 10 years. So I'm always excited to be one of the instructors on today's webinar, uh, because even though I didn't teach a math or science subject, there are so many ways that I could have used the CK12 platform to make my teaching easier and help students with their learning. So I can't wait to give you non-STEM folks some ideas for how to use our site for, um, for like setting up a book from scratch and things like that. But also it looks like we have a lot of science teachers on here, some math teachers as well. So um, we will be covering the community contributed content more thoroughly of how to find uh, math and science content that others have contributed. So it's kind of a, uh, a session that hopefully everybody will, will take something away. Great. So as we've told you now in almost all the webinars, we're going to go and dig, make sure that you're in your chat window broadcasting to all panelists and attendees. I can already see here, if you look in the chat window, we are, you still have quite a few people just tell, talking to the panelists and no one else. So please make sure you've selected that. Also, we do have a wonderful resource page here. And so make sure you can go download it using that tiny URL there. And we're gonna go ahead and paste it into the chat window so that you can access it there. But they're really wonderful to keep nearby during the session, but also as a great reference afterward. And you might even be able to use them for your final um, beyond the CEP program assignment at the end. So lots of good reasons for those. All right, and we are, our participation uh, is now up to 1,800 participants from over 90 countries. And I saw today we um, had people from uh, various parts in India. We had Romania, Egypt, uh, South Africa again. Beautiful spot. Lindsay and I were just talking about Nisna in South Africa. We've both been there, and Plet is just down the road from there. So greetings to everybody from around the world. Um, this is going to be, I think, a really, really nice session here. Um, so. In fact, we'd like to le learn a little bit more about you before we get going with this webinar. And we're gonna launch a poll right now with three questions for you to fill out. The first is, what non-STEM subject area are you hoping to learn more about during this webinar? What areas are you most interested in today? And what part of the world are you in right now? So we'll let you um, spend a few moments doing that. And we got our first vote, excellent. Looks like um, we're getting us some excellent answers here. Um, we'd love more people to vote. We're only at about 50% right now. So go ahead and let us know why you've arrived today and where you're from. This is kind of exciting yeah the where you're from part we're really just curious we love that part of the webinar when we start broadcasting and we get to see everybody type in where they're from and carl just mentioned some worldwide areas but also there seem to be plenty of people from you know missouri and georgia and nebraska and pennsylvania so obviously welcome to all of our um, usa folks as well Excellent. We're going to give you about 10 more seconds here, and then we'll share the results out. Also, we added other to what part of the world are you in right now, because somebody was in the ocean, I think, in our last session when we asked this and, and couldn't figure out how to respond. Yeah, I think it was Bermuda. And so it's, it's definitely not connected to a major landmass. All right, let's go ahead and close down the polls and share out the results. Um, 
So language arts is the big winner of what non-STEM subject we're interested in here. Still some foreign languages, career tech is interesting, social studies, so that's great. And then finding con contributed com uh, community contributed content is the main area that we're interested in. And of course, you know, we as educators hate to reinvent the wheel. So being able to start with something that somebody else has already done is really, in my mind, the best way to do it. Um, what part of the world are you in right now? 81% of you from North America. And we have no Australia this morning and no South America, but a few in Europe and Asia and Africa. So um, there you go. So let's um, close that out and let's move, move on here. Um, we, we're checking Twitter um, all the time. And so we're looking at the hashtag CK12 certified or those who have tagged at um, CK12 foundation, but just a few we were looking at this morning. Um, really excited. Monica created, edited and created her first Flexbook 2.0 um, and it was on the ocean studies. And so that was really exciting. She posted that, shared that on Twitter. Um, I like a lot of these posts where again, we recognize that you guys are taking time out of your summer to do some professional development or winter, depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, and that says a lot about you as an educator that you're here and you're wanting to learn with us. Um, so we've, yeah, homework time with some coffee, somebody who's working this morning, um, people hoping to use the Flexbook 2.0 platform, um, who wants to collaborate. I love the all call to collaboration. So uh, don't worry about, oh, that's you, Bridget just said that's me in, in the, the chat. Like, I, I love that that you asked like, hey, we're working with Go Open Virginia and you know, who wants to collaborate with us? I hope, I hope that you start to get some responses to that. Um, it is interesting to see that, you know, like I said, what subjects you guys are interested in with CK12. Um, we do have the most coverage for STEM content, specifically for middle and high school math and science, but our platform can be used in a variety of ways for a variety of subjects. So hopefully I'm going to give you some ideas today. Specifically, in today's webinar, we're going to cover the non-STEM CK12 content first. And then we're going to talk about navigating the schools page. Maybe we've referenced it in some of the other webinars, but I really want to show you what the schools page can offer you. We're going to talk about finding community contributed content for all subjects. We're going to talk about creating a flexbook from scratch and then also writing your own questions. And this was also kind of covered in our customizing um, adaptive practice webinar, but for those of you particularly who are looking to create books from scratch, maybe on subjects where we don't already have content, um, I need to do some, a few reminders about how to tag those questions. So it's helpful to remind everybody about the CK12 Foundation's main priority when it comes to developing content for users. One of CK12's missions is to advance learning of math and science with world-class, multimodal, free, customized curriculum content and assessment on a digital platform that will lead to personalized instruction and a reduced workload for teachers. One question we get asked all the time, if there are any plans to expand our content to offer more non-STEM area. The short answer, no but we have comprehensive coverage for middle school and high school uh, math and science and have started building out more in elementary content, such as our K-5 science books. Most of the initiatives at CK-12 focus on enhancing our math and science content to personalize learning for students. Our steady growth in other subject areas is thanks to educators like you who are creating content on our site and sharing it with users from around the world. The first thing I want to show you in this webinar is the non-STEM content that CK12 has available for you. So on our homepage, when you browse different subjects, you'll see a few English branches for both writing and for spelling, and a few additional subjects under more for history and for health. And then on our browser page, you'll also see an area for user contributed content, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. If you were to go into those subjects, you're gonna see some of the content that we offer, which are mainly flex books in these areas. So for writing, we have a common sense composition book, um, which might be a good starting point for some of you uh, uh, ELA folks. Um, we've got Journalism 101, the Glyphata Method, which is an, an essay writing um, suggestion. 
we have a basic speller student materials and a basic speller teaching edition for um, those working on just spelling skills. Two history books, the history source book advanced, the history source book basic. And then for health, we have a health course skills for a healthy me and teen health literacy. These are the CK-12 non-STEM books that we have had a hand in um, ingesting, curating, editing, all of that. Unlike our math and science concepts that come with a lot of different modalities like reads and clicks and videos, practice, real world applications, most of our non-STEM subjects just have flexbooks. And spelling is a bit of an exception because it has adaptive practice questions as well. But that doesn't mean that we don't have interdisciplinary concepts that work well in your subject area. Um, for instance, if you've attended the interactives webinar, we have one on Friday, if you haven't yet, it's a good one. You've seen our math and science clicks and our interactives team actually makes an effort to keep non-STEM subjects in mind when creating their clicks. Depending on your subject, we might have clicks that would be perfect for your area of study or even lend themselves to cross-discipline units. Um, we know that there's a lot of pressure to, you know, cover math across all subjects because of testing or to infuse more, more language arts or for you to collaborate with the teacher down your hall on some different areas. So just a few clicks that, um, that the, the team gave a shout out to here is uh, like this first one that's on um, system of linear inequalities and two variables, but it's talking about President Jefferson's octagonal home. Um, this next one uh, could be used for art. It's about angles and lines in a perspective drawing using graph intercepts. Then in the area of like fashion design, we have introduction to matrices. We've got the hound's tooth pattern. In cooking, home ec area, we have dimensional analysis talking about teaspoons, cups, milliliters. And then in an the area of like photography, stem and leaf plots and histograms, um, how they relate to digital photography. So just, just trying to plant a seed, I guess, that um, no matter what your area is, we probably already have some built-in content for you if you started to search some key terms and you might be able to find what you are looking for. So um, let me show you this in action here. I'm going to go live to the CK12 homepage and I'm going to show you some different ways to browse. So here from the homepage, um, right now we have this, what are you looking for today area? And this is one place for you to click on content. We also, across our site, um, again, if you go to the subjects menu, say you're on a different page, um, you could see all the subjects listed. I also like this explore button. If I knew that I was looking for content in a specific area, I could say, hey, I wonder what Flexbooks 2.0 they have on this subject, easy access to the school page that we're gonna talk about later, some standards. Um, and then all of our other products. So um, don't be scared to use this explore option. But from the homepage, let me just go into, uh, under English, let me go into writing. And you'll see that we have three books on our bookshelf here for writing. And um, we've been promoting our new Flexbook 2.0 platform. And as quickly as we can, we're taking all the CK12 books and updating them and making them more um, interactive and putting them on that 2.0 platform. But right now, these writing books are still just kind of sitting on the Flexbook 1.0 shelf. Um, but this Common Sense Composition book, if I open this up, um, if, if you've never really looked at the details tab for, our different books on the Flexbook 1 or the Flexbook 2. Um, that's where you can find a little bit of information. If you're thinking, hey, I wonder, wonder what the context is for this book. Um, it says the textbook follows California language art standards for grades 9 through 12, provides generalized understanding of composition, serves as supplementary aid to high school English teachers. So maybe that excites some of you. Um, we have an author listed here. And um, I can tell you that this team of authors, they came from San Jose State University and they donated this content to us. If you wanna know how recent the content is, the date it was created was 2012 on our site. It was last modified 2015. So as you're looking for, for other subjects or community contributed, I recommend going to the details page pretty early on to just have some understanding of, okay, who created this book? How recently has it been updated? because um, that last modified date may or may not be relevant depending on your, your subject area. Um, 
just a reminder that all of our resources have a unique URL. So if I wanted to send this to a colleague, I could come up to my browser and I could just copy and paste this URL and send it to somebody and say, hey, I just, I found a book. Maybe this is interesting, right? That's just sharing the URL. Um, or if I wanted to start making changes to this, I press the button, I press the customize button and then I would be able to change the title, delete the chapters, all that kind of stuff. But you would in general want to come over here and look at the table of contents and say, um, you're really interested in the four different essay types that are listed here, but you're not as interested in these other subjects. Remember that you can customize and you can delete these additional chapters. You can add additional content. You can mix and match it on our site. So um, I would doubt in whatever your setting is that this common sense composition book is perfect for you, but it might get you 60% of the way there, 70% of the way there. You know, we can, we can give you some good starter content to use at your school where um, you're filling in the rest with those exciting resources that you've developed and curated um, over your teaching career. Um, that's a little bit about the Common Sense Composition Book. Um, let me go back. I always press the logo up here to go back to the homepage. And if I go back under English, I told you spelling's a little bit different because we've broken it down into concepts. And so they have reads and they have practice. But here, if you wanted to just see the books, you could go over to the tab and here's these books on the shelf. Um, but if I wanted to see the concepts on this concept tab, I could expand all and I can see all of the offerings we have for spelling. You can see that it's broken down by um, different letters, different sounds, things like that. Um, but if you were to open one of these up, you're gonna find that we have a read that's like a lesson talking about the consonant sound K, and then we also have a practice available. So spelling is the only non-STEM subject that we have adaptive practice for. Okay, um, the search bar is also something that you guys will wanna try out. If you haven't been searching with a search bar, it's a good way to look for uh, different resources. And this is what your students are used to because they're all Googlers and they wanna use the search bar. So you can encourage students to use it as well. But if I were to search for something, even like, like, like I said, a, a non maybe traditional, a non STEM thing, if I wanted to go to photography and search, you can see that um, CK12 has some photography content. It's fairly limited. There's 24 results, and often for other math and science concepts, you'll see thousands of results. Um, reminders that you can filter on the sides here. I personally tend to ignore the grade filter, but I often come down here, and if I know that I want a, a read, a, a lesson on it, if I'm interested in, oh, what are these real world applications that have to do with photography? I can, I can filter by category down here, and that's a good way to, to sort through the activities. Um, so this is a real, real world application, and then um, like this is the stem and leaf plot and histograms that I showed you on a slide earlier with clicks. So, um, try it. Try our search bar and see if we see if we have some content that's going to come up for you that CK12 offers. So I'm going to pause there for a second for Q&A. Um, again, that was just all of CK12 stuff where we're going to start moving into the community contributed area. Are there anybody burning up with questions right now? Yeah, we have a question here. What's the difference in sharing the book with your class versus assigning the sections individually? So for CK12, when we talk about assignments, um, that means that you're wanting some sort of, you know, grade pass back. You're wanting some information on did the students open that resource, did they interact with it, or primarily did they answer their adaptive practice questions or their quizzes. So the only way to get that kind of a feedback is to assign it. And you would assign it either through CK12 classes or if you use Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, you would go through those applications um, for your assignments. Um, just sharing, just, just taking the URL and sharing it, all it does is give somebody access to that resource. So different, um, you know, there's, there's different purposes for each. Maybe if you just wanted to open up with an activity in class and you said, hey, I want everybody to read this, you don't need to assign it. You just want to share the link and have everybody look at it. But if you want to know if they did that adaptive practice, then, then assignment's most appropriate. Um, we're wondering, um, one of the users would like to see a quick walk through the different types of categories of the filters on the search page, and if you can just kind of um, talk about what those differences are. I'm sure. So let me search for something that might have some more water mold. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to go to water. 
um, something that would have lots of search results. So we're seeing four, over 4,000 search results for water. Um, the filters over here to the left, it's, you're gonna see that it shuffles the grade and it does that because it lists it in order of which grade has the most resources. Um, since we are concept-based and, and working on fundamentals, and we, we recognize that um, people would be teaching water distribution at um, different grade levels depending on what area of the country you're in or what type of school you're in or what level the student's at. So probably the grade filter, like I said, is, is the one that's, uh, I prefer not to use the grade because I think it's entirely subjective as far as, you know, when somebody in India might be teaching this versus the U.S. versus, you know, a different elementary school versus middle school, that kind of thing. Um, Subjects, if you are looking for crossover content on different subjects, you could choose to um, filter by that. But I like the categories down here. And again, it's sorted by, we've got the most reads lessons on these concepts and then real world applications, videos. So if I knew that I wanted a video, again, water is super big. So I'd probably want to narrow it down to like water distribution, water cycle. Um, things like that, I would do a better search. Um, but I can see that these are all of the videos that we have that have to do with water. And I could, you know, uncheck this and I could say, all right, look, what are the real world applications look like? How much water is there? Deep water. And then you can also see when you filter that way, you know, the grades that we've tagged it to as well. There's a question here. Can you filter by NGSS standard? And I think the way that I would always encourage people to do that is go ahead and type the standard up in the um, search box itself and content will come up. I always use, I'm a mathematician, so I always use 8.g.3 for the um, geometry translation and because that's one I happen to know in eighth grade. And you'll see here content that does come up based on that standard. Um, so there it is, properties of dilations, et cetera, in the Math 8 book. So you can always type in either the Common Core standard or the, um, uh, NGSS standard, and I know that various people are working on putting in um, international baccalaureate and also IGCSE standards. So if you can tag those in your content, people will be able to find them using our, um, our search bar. All right, well, let's continue on here, and let me pull up my screen again. So, one thing that many users don't realize about CK12 is that a large portion of our site falls under what we call community contributed content. And this is a huge growth area for us. As more districts are using open resources and using teachers to curate and customize content instead of purchasing through publishers, you'll continue to see more and more non-STEM, even advanced placement and international baccalaureate books on our site. One of the best places to see some of the books that schools and districts are creating is from our schools page. And you can do this from the home page. You do need to make sure that you're logged in as a teacher because students see a slightly different home page um, and do not see the schools icon. Um, under the explore section, I like these explore circles quite a bit to get to different browse pages easily. You'll see the schools icon. Um, you can select this um, or you can always just go directly to ck12.org schools if you would like a direct link. Um, but when you arrive at the schools page, no matter how you do it, um, it will automatically pull up books in the state you're in. So here it knows that we're in California right now, and it pulled up any books that schools have published and elected to put on the site and tag to a specific school or district. Um, so this is not, this is not an all-inclusive comprehensive thing. We have hundreds of thousands of customized books on our site, but we give users the option to number one, choose if you want to publish that and make it available through search for other users. And then a next level to that is to claim your school's page and put your books on the school's page. So fewer people kind of go that extra mile of putting it on the school's page. We would love for you to start claiming your school page so others could benefit from your resources. And to do this, um, think of the appropriate person to claim your school. Because there's really one owner of like your school page on CK12, and it might be you, but it also might be somebody who's 
a technology coordinator or a curriculum director or other administrator to make sure that, you know, the keeper of the school's page on CK12 kind of remains with the district or school. Um, but to claim your school, you'll fill out the following information. Um, we, this is a template that we set up. Set up. It's pretty easy. So you're going to email support and you're going to say, I would like to claim the school's page for my school name. Um, here's my name, job title, school phone, website. Uh, we'll follow up if need be. And then we will give you access to take your customized Flexbooks and put them on the page. This gives both your users easy access to it. It gives the parents easy ac access to it. And um, some people, this is how their students mainly access the book. Uh, they, they go to ck12.org slash schools and they, they're, they're able to access their book there. So if you know that you're interested in this claim your school process, we made a tinyurl.com. Um, that's the quick reference for you to claim your school and get on the school's page. But let's talk about how to search through this page. Um, there are a few districts that I want to highlight because of the quality of community contributed and non-STEM books that they've made available for everybody to use. And one is the El Paso Independent School District, uh, EPISD. You've probably heard us mention quite a bit in these webinars because they're one of our original partners who really committed to going open and systematically creating new flex books with teams of teacher, writers, and editors. So you can see on their schools page in Texas that they have all sorts of books. They have AP US history, AP government, macroeconomics, sociology, world history, um, and so many more. They recently added more English books, Spanish one, Spanish two, other social studies books. So they, they started with some of our content initially, and then now they like the Flexbook model so much, they've decided as a district, they're no longer purchasing textbooks. And instead, they're gonna systematically roll out all subjects through Flexbooks. And they've got a process for that and teams of teachers to do that. But if you like any of the content you see on their page, um, CK12 is hands off of this. We have not personally gone through and vetted all of their content. And that's why it's in a separate section under the schools page under Texas El Paso. They are in charge of that. But we can tell you that they're, they're doing the process the right way. They're, they're having, you know, teachers and educators put it together, they're having editors look at it. Um, so it's, it's a process that's working for them and you can start by customizing any of their books if you would like. Um, I do wanna play a quick video here of Tim Holt, who's one of our friends who leads the initiative in El Paso. And in this video, he speaks about the CK12 partnership and why he thinks it's important to share resources with others. One of the neat things about open education resources, Creative Commons, CK12, is that when you create something, it doesn't just stay with you. You actually have to put it back up for others to share. And so whatever you create becomes part of the larger community. So all the textbooks that EPISD has created are up online for anyone to use. And we encourage people to use them. We encourage people to give us feedback. You know, we, we know that we can always do a better job. And if there's a school district that wants to use our textbooks, please, please do. We actually have been, we have been contacted uh, over the years by many uh, school districts that are interested in saving money, they're interested in open education resources, they're interested in having control over their, you know, I think it, Apple calls it controlling the whole widget, you know, from beginning to end. And so when you control the curriculum, when you control everything, including the textbook, you're in control of the whole widget. And, uh, and that's something that CK12 allows you to do. And EPISD is more than willing to share our processes. We're more than willing to share our books. So uh, that's, that's, that's part of the deal with CK12 is that you're sharing uh, what you create. Uh, if you're interested in connecting with Tim Holt or anyone else we feature in any of these webinars or our panelists who appear on our case studies, just send us an email to jumpstart and we'll do a digital introduction of, we do, we, we do this all the time. This is common practice of like, hey, I want my district to start doing what El Paso is doing. We will get you on the phone with Tim, with, with the superintendent, with the book creators, whatever you need to get information about how they're doing it and how, um, how it can assist you. We're, we're happy to help with that.
And I noticed somebody said, I wish LAUSD would drop purchasing textbooks. It's a waste of money. And it is interesting because um, I've been in LAUSD, uh, I've worked for them, and more, more recently I've had meetings with them, and they are using CK12 more and more through their Schoology app. They already have a key, so if, if, you, are, um, if you are going here, then definitely do that. Sorry, we were just talking over the black screen, so everybody's like, the screen froze. Um, just commenting on the chat there for a second, but you guys should be back. Um, EPISD is a great one to check out on the school's page. I think Tullahoma is another one that we want to highlight because they've been doing innovative things around open content in Tullahoma, Tennessee. EPISD started their process with science books, but Tullahoma actually, they started with the non-STEM stuff. Um, they came to us and they were up for an adoption for social studies and they decided to create books instead of purchasing them. Um, that year they used their saved money to purchase technology for their schools. Then they followed up year one with math and they've continued to expand to other areas such as language arts. Uh, it's interesting because they saw the potential of the CK12 platform that we could organize their resources, that we could make books available on any device, and that's what they did. So if you arrive at their schools page, you'll see things like social studies books for grades four through eight, ELA books for elementary, uh, there's a first grade and a third grade on up to high school, ninth and 10th. They've localized their books to best fit their area. In their social studies books, you'll learn about the Tullahoma graduate who went on to be a Grand Ole Opry star. And throughout these books, you'll see that they've aligned to the Tennessee state standards. Um, but if you're one of these language arts folks who's on this webinar right now, and you're looking for books on our site, um, and know that CK-12's creative books are limited, one of these Tullahoma books might get you a start where you don't have to create a book totally from scratch. It's at least opening them up and looking at them and seeing if there's anything of value. Because remember, you can look at any lesson and you can put add to Flexbook and you can add any of these lessons that you find in any of these books to your own Flexbook that you've created. So that's, that's the pay it forward. That's why people are sharing on the school's pages. They're proud of their books and they want you to take advantage of them and use them as well. Um, Carl and I and Katie, we've had the opportunity to visit Tullahoma, and we wanna show you a series of short interviews with some of their teachers and administrators that really help tell their experiences with CK-12 Flexbooks. I, th I think more accurately, concurrently with the devices, we had a push for OER. We spent some time at Rice University looking at the OpenStax program, and we're really involved in a discussion that said, we really wish we could find something like this for K-12 environment. As we started doing some research, ran across CK-12 and realized this is that missing link that we're looking for. This is something that will connect our devices to our kids with standards-based instruction that we think is valuable for them. So it, it really provided a, a sorely needed niche and connection that is invaluable for us. I, I think it's obviously the future for, for education. And I think that CK-12 is only gonna allow us to um, help to personalize and blend learning, which is, is the direction that our education program needs to head, not just Tillamah City Schools, but the nation as a whole. We need to offer what the kids need. We need to offer directly what the kids need, in addition to the adults as well. So. If we're not if we're not personalizing, you know, personalizing it using technology, then uh, we're falling behind. And and CK CK one two, it's one of those tools that that helps us uh, move forward. It's the great thing about CK twelve is they have a community contributed tab, so teachers are able to go access not only content that CK CK twelve has vetted, but also content that underground users have vetted or other districts have vetted. So teachers are able to go out and pull a textbook complete uh, matched to the standards and they can start utilizing CK-12 today without a lot of investment on curating their own content. As they work through the textbook, the beauty of CK-12 is if they find some content that they want to add in addition to what CK-12 has provided or another district has provided, they can go and add that content as they go. So, so they are constantly developing their textbook as a living document the entire time they're teaching their curriculum. Our day when we do CK-12 or when we do a lesson in here starts with 
Google Classroom. That's where I put all of the lessons. I put all the links to CK12 there. They do have their own CK12 account and they do have the sixth grade textbook in their library and they can access it, any of the lessons, anytime from that particular place. The, the lessons follow the Tennessee state standards. Whatever I'm supposed to teach, that's what we wrote about and that's what we included in to meet those standards. We might have an activity that links to an outside source. I might have it just written in there. I might link to a video. But that's an everyday thing. We don't just sometimes use CK12. We use CK12 all the time, every day, in some manner. Um, I'm here. It is not a get on the computer and just do your lesson without a teacher involvement, because I handle this just like it's a textbook, except it's on a computer. I use it more as a teacher resource. Instead of regularly assigning them chapters, I use it to house all of my instructional information and then I will piecemeal, um, piecemeal give it to them as I want them to have it. So for me, it's like having all of my unit notebooks, but 10 times better because I can access it whenever I want and I can add all of those digital resources and access them wherever I need to. So those are just a few of the hundreds of testimonials that we've collected from teachers and administrators across the country. Um, I hope these clips give you some idea, some ideas. I use it more as a teacher. Well, we're going backwards. Um, anyway, ck12.org slash testimonials, or you can find testimonials in our footer. Um, sometimes this helps you find, you know, if you want to sort by administrator, like maybe this helps sell some of your administrators on CK12, or we've got a student section where students are giving testimonials. So um, you might wanna look through some of these videos if they help you as you're trying to create a CK12 movement in your school or district, um, or just get some more ideas about different use cases. So the next thing that I wanna discuss is finding community contributed content, whether that's STEM or non-STEM through our search feature. So let me go ahead and we're gonna go back to the homepage. And coming back up um, to the search box, earlier I searched for photography. And we looked at, this is the stuff that CK12 offers in the area of photography. But we do a great job of hiding this community contributed tab. But for anything that you search for, you should see CK12 content, community contributed, and my library. So when I flip over to community contributed, we've, we've partitioned it because again, CK 12's hands off of what these things are, right? But this user, Steven, has contributed a lesson on build your digital photography portfolio. Um, this is an EPISD journalism um, lesson here, this read photography in yearbook. Um, we've got some books of digital photography basics. So I could go into any of these um, you know, read some, I'm curious of what is this? I can open it up. I can see that they're talking about building a digital portfolio. Again, if this helps me, I can always add it to a Flexbook textbook, which if I press this button, it would ask me to pick a book that's in my library to do that. But the community contributed to have, this is, this is a feature that many of our users who've used us for years and years and years have never noticed that there's this separate section that's community contributed. And then similarly, as you start building out your library and other resources, you can use the search bar and then you can go to library. I don't know if we have anything. Here's something that we created in our library that references photography, but um, you can start searching your library by these search terms as well. So that's one thing to be on the lookout for. Um, also, like if I wanted to search something, let's, let's use like AP English. Now, CK12 doesn't have a whole lot. It's just going to pull up a bunch of our spelling lessons, right? But if I go over to Community Contributed, now I'm going to see Flexbook textbooks. Uh, we've got, you know, SAT, AP English Literature, Flexbook textbooks, Hacking into Literature. I've looked at this book before, so it's created by Anne. You know, the date is, is older, 2015, 2016, but for English Lit and Cough, does that matter? So I might check out, I can check out her syllabus. What's the poems of the day? Um, I can go over to details and see that this was created in June 2015 and you know, it's not really an actively edited book. 
But if you want to ingest any of this into your own book, you can just start adding these things to your Flexbook, or you can add it to your library as kind of a place to keep resources you might be interested in accessing later. Um, so even a search like, like literature, English literature, AP literature, um, will yield some results here. Or if you wanted to come to the search page and do like EPISD, Carl searched for um, a, a Common Core standard earlier. EPISD gets you to the page here where that'll take you to their school page directly. So you can use our search bar for a variety of ways, but the key thing I wanted to show you there is the community contributed tab. Um, also, I think it's worth mentioning because I, I think this is really cool and Sony might have shown you this in the, the simulations and Flix webinar, but on our simulations, I'm gonna go into this one that's going fishing. And our simulations, there's an intro video, you get to a sandbox, you get to, you get to questions. But at the end of all of our simulations, we have these real world examples. And these are the ones that CK12 has come up with as extension activities for this going fishing. But there is a community contributed tab. And this is where classrooms of science students have done the simulation and then their teacher has said, I want you guys to come up with real world examples that you can contribute to CK12. And these are student created extensions. So they submit it to CK12, our team vets them and then like basically presses a button to get them on the community contributed tab. But if you're looking for like a real way for students to contribute, they get published, they can show mom and dad that look, hey, I'm on their website. Uh, it's a pretty awesome way to, to do that. So we've been promoting this idea to teachers, this community contributed tab, even within our simulations. Um, and then what I was talking about earlier with the schools page, again, here I am. Um, you can get to it from the logo, the schools or ck12.org slash schools. And just, just try searching the area near you and see if there's anything interesting happening there. Or um, if, you're, if you're wanting to explore, again, our, kind of our, our most robust partner at the moment would be this El Paso district where you can scroll down and you can open up any of their books and say, hey, I'm curious. All right, AP government, um, sociology or you know, Spanish 1 2018 open up their book. If you like it, you can start customizing it right away, or you can start blending books by adding them to your own Flexbook. So I'm going to stop there and we'll do another check on Q&A and see how we're doing. Yeah. Is there a vetting process for the CK-12 materials? Please. Yeah. Anything that's CK-12, so not community contributed, not on the schools page, anything that's CK-12, we actually go through um, a process that's very similar to how the publishers um, do their process. If we have domain experts, often people with PhDs um, who have worked on the original content. Sometimes it's been donated from NASA scientists or different university professors. But then our team, um, our in-house team with some domain expert contractors continually go through and vet and improve and make sure the content is accurate. And, you know, again, right now we're, we're all enhancing these books with as many interactives and interactivity as we can. Um, but yes, CK 12, like we, we, we take ownership of the things that have the CK 12 logo or not logo. This book has the logo on it too, but I mean the CK 12 branded, you know, in our section, um, of content, we take ownership of that. It's, it's been through a very, very thorough process. Um, these other books, we need you to put on your kind of open resource hat and start using your criteria to figure out, is this Spanish content? Is this good content? Is there something here that would help you out? Um, you have to do a little more curation because the CK12 team has been hands off of the community content. Um, here's another question for you. Um, do community contributed um, RW videos have to meet a certain spec, require subtitles, etc.? So this would, I guess, the RW meaning of real world applications. Do they have to have um, captions and things like that? Are there any requirements? Um, not that I'm aware of. You can, so if you're looking to be the creator, I'm guessing, of this content, you can come to create new from your library. And I'm going to show you this in a minute about creating a book from scratch, but you can create what we call a modality. And that takes you to basically our blank editor. So if you're wanting to create your own real world application um, or your own video, whatever you want to do, 
Um, you just are going to give it a title and then you're set in a blank editor like you would be in our book. Um, and you can insert media so you can pull an embed code from YouTube. Um, so when we're, you're talking about videos meeting any certain spec requirements, uh, we do not host any videos on our site. We're always um, sharing them through embed codes. So you would just paste the embed code there and whatever YouTube um, has defined as its specifications would carry over. Um, but that kind of starts the process. I, if that didn't answer your question, you're welcome to submit it again. And there's another question here, which I think is a really interesting one. They've written, I just thought of a few surprises that the kids discovered during labs, and I'm sure they'd love to publish, and um, like making a thousand prisms with their cell phones and refraction classes. How would I publish that again? So, you know, the bottom line is you can have your students create videos. They're very good at it. And then you post them to YouTube. All videos, is, as Lindsay has just said, get posted. We don't host videos on our own site. And then you take the embed code from YouTube in order to um, put that into your CK12 content. And we'll go through that um, embedding from YouTube after we wrap up the um, webinar today. Okay, so I think at this point we are gonna move on. So Lindsay, why don't you um, continue for us? All right, we're gonna kick back over to our keynote here in a second um, and so we, t we talked about finding community contributed content that may serve as a starter flexbook for you, but some of you still might want to create a book from scratch. And I just want to give you a reminder that you can use our platform to create a book on anything. And this is kind of exciting. Um, Katie and I were in Middleton, Delaware, Middletown, Delaware, and we visited a, a certified educator named Dave Wessel, and he was using his science content through Schoology. And so we talked to him a lot about that, but then somewhere in the conversation he said, hey, I've also talked to the head lacrosse coach into using it with our athletes, because he was an assistant lacrosse coach. So um, he gave us a little glimpse at this lacrosse manual, but he, he said that they were really trying to find one place that could house videos and playbook and, you know, just anything that comes with, with a coaching manual and they were struggling to, with, with YouTube wasn't enough, Google Drive was insufficient, but really liked the idea of creating a book on our site that could then be spit out to any device. So the athletes could access it on their phone, they could ask, access it on a tablet, a browser, a, a desktop, you know, whatever they wanted to use. So um, just, I'm encouraging you guys to think outside the box. Um, I think I told you I taught video production, I taught IB film. And the year I, I piloted an IB film class and I was using Google Docs to organize film clips and articles and critic reviews and, and terminology and history. And a lot of this was public domain. So I could have easily under copyright, you know, compiled a flex book that had my lessons and assignments and I could link out to YouTube or Vimeo with the video clips. Maybe I could have had my students start their own books from scratch with their own film reviews because don't forget that students can also create their own books. Um, our platform, I, that, that's just the, you have to see the potential of our platform. It does what few other tools can do. It can organize and it can push out content onto any device. So in getting started with Flexbooks webinar, we discussed some of the best practices when editing books with teams of teachers. And I'd like to review some of these that you might want to think about when working with non-STEM books from scratch. First step is form your curriculum teams and then assign one person to be the leader. Then make sure you're using a separate account not attached to any one individual's um, CK12 account. So for example, create a Spanish at episd.org account and store the Spanish book that you're creating in that account. That way if it's not attached to anybody and if they happen to leave, then the book stays with the district or stays with the school. <laughs> then what I would suggest is to break up the work by chapter and encourage everybody to establish a common style guide. Use the same fonts and the same layout so that the book has a, a uniformity to it. Finally, add an original content or open source content that complies with our CCBYNC license. And speaking of which, you need to be comp license compliant. This is where 
educators have to be a little bit of a lawyer here. And while CK-12 is free, it is still under copyright. It's an open copyright, but a copyright nonetheless. The most important parts of our Creative Commons copyright is that we require you to give us credit, that's the attribution part, who it's by, and that you only use it for non-commercial uses. So um, this means please don't sell content that you find on CK-12 for free. That would be um, not good. So it is pretty straightforward. You're using, if you're using CK-12 content, attribute it and don't sell it. If the content comes from a copyrighted book, including from the large educational publishers, you cannot include it in your Flexbook. They do not like it when you take their content and put it for the world to access for free. It's kind of against their business model there. We frequently go to Go Open Summits where districts are committed to using open educational resources. It's been a great place to find out more about using OER. So not surprising that over half the Go Open districts use CK-12 to meet their commitment. And I encourage everyone to visit the Go Open website and consider using their district launch packet as a guide. All right, we told you you can create a book from scratch and you can also write your own questions to accompany your original content. And I'm gonna go through this fairly swiftly because this is covered really thoroughly in our customizing adaptive practice that some of you may have seen or if you're wanting more information about how to do this, you'll probably at some point wanna revisit that video or visit our help desk. But just a reminder here that we offer many question types, multiple choice, select all that apply, true, false, short answer, fill in the blank, drag and drop, highlight, and discussion questions. So you've got a lot of options for how you create your questions. And um, if you're gonna customize questions, you're gonna follow these steps. You're gonna pick the question type. That's the first thing, what type of question you're gonna ask. You're gonna write the prompt. You add in answers, and if it's a multiple choice, you add in the incorrect answers, the distractors. You have the option to include a hint if you would like. You can select the difficulty level of the question. We have easy, medium, and hard. And you can add in question details. And then you can also use variables if you need variables in your questions. So one thing in the question editor that I particularly wanna call out to you is the concepts box. Um, all questions must be tagged to a concept. So if you are using CK 12's, you know, resources for math and science, then there's going to be a logical concept for you. You're going to tag it to a Pythagorean theorem. You're going to tag it to the water cycle. You're going to tag it to, to one of our concepts. But if you are creating something that's in the areas of, you know, language arts or social, social studies, we might not have a concept available for you to tag. So what you're gonna do with these questions that you create, because you wanna create digital quizzes, you wanna embed inline questions into your flexbooks that you're creating on these non-STEM subjects, is you need to have a resource in your library that you tag it to. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you a quick demo of how to create a book from scratch and how to tag a question to your library, but just keep this box in mind because that's for you non-STEM folks, it is an important one. So I'm going back to, let's go all the way back to the home page here. And to create a Flexbook from scratch, the easiest way to do that is to go to your library because as you saw earlier, this is where you get a create new button. And any of these new things that you create, like that RW example I started earlier, it's now in my library. My library is just a repository of the things that I've customized or I've clicked the add to library button or that I've created new. So if you're gonna create a Flexbook, again, we would suggest that you start building with the Flexbook 2.0 platform. Um, some of our other content is still in the 1.0, but everything we're building as a team from here on out is definitely in this new 2.0 platform. You are able to give this a title. So we're gonna call it something cool like Lindsay's book for CEP July. Um, I can change the image of the cover to, to anything that's within copyright. Um, so I could change it to something from my own personal photo collection. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and save my book just to, just to get it going here. So I can see that I've started the shell of my book. And again, I'm gonna jumpstart account uh, just a demo account, so that's why it says that. But now that I've customized a book, um, 
from here on out, it's going to be edit. You can always edit your book at any time. So even though you're saving final drafts, all that kind of thing, you can always edit your book at any time. And for you folks who are creating books from scratch, you're probably going to want to start organizing with some chapters. So maybe I'm going to start with just, I'm going to call this my syllabus, um, or maybe like welcome is going to be my, my general chapter title. And then I'm going to create a new read that's going to say, um, you know, this will be my syllabus. And I would type in my really cool content here. And I'm going to go ahead and finalize that draft. And here I'm starting to, ooh, that looks really neat. Um, I'm going to go back over to my book and I can continue the editing process. And I can, um, you know, start expanding chapters and I can drag this underneath. So in my welcome section right now, I just have my syllabus, but I could add in, you know, my classroom rules, these forms, whatever. I can start building chapters and lessons using our ad content. Or I can also search CK12. And here is where I could search in, you know, I've been talking about photography. I could search um, for photography and I can find, you know, oh yeah, I wanted this lesson on um, diffraction and it's here and I can drag it under the chapter that I just created or I could create endless chapter titles and lessons. So you can blend our content, you can blend the books that are created by other users and you're gonna all, you're gonna do that here. Um, so let me also go to the library and oh here I'll, I'll save my book so we have it forever and ever and ever because mm -hmm. um, you'll see it um, in my library this new book that I just created it's right there and you can see the syllabus that I created that's right there but for you guys creating quiz questions remember you go to your create quiz. This was all covered in another lesson, but you have to add some questions. And if I'm not adding any from math, science, and English, I'm gonna create a new question here. Choose the question type. And then the thing that I wanted to call out to you is that if it's a non-math and science thing, like say I wrote a question on Shakespeare, I'm gonna to have to search my library. So I'm gonna do Shakespeare, search my library and I have a lesson in my library called William Shakespeare Facts and that's where I'm going to tag any questions if this was about Romeo and Juliet or Shakespeare's life I just need to tag it to something that's the way our back end of our system works it's got to live somewhere so you can tag it to your library all right I know we're approaching the hour mark so um it looks like our Q&A is pretty well under control so I think Carl's going to do a little bit of wrap-up information and then those of you who need to sign off at the end of his wrap-up information can but then I'm going to stay on and we'll demo anything you guys want to see um, after that fantastic so as we wrap things up here I encourage you to um, take a look at the CK12 CAFE, which is our discussion forum specifically the jumpstart for educator forums where people share ideas and go to the community of educators asking questions about using CK12. And this is different than just emailing support. This is finding out for the community how to best use CK12. And I really encourage if you haven't had a chance to go there, go check it out at ck12.org slash forums. We've got a great networking opportunity for you using the CEP alumni page. So the certified educators from previous years, you can go there, select a state that you're interested in, and look at all the certified educators that have come before you. Take a look too for the envelope next to their name, and this means they're welcome they're welcoming you to reach out to them and email them if you have any questions or would you would like to connect with them based on what they're doing. So um, we also, as you are about to finish up here with the Certified Educator Program, we'd love to list you there and there'll be information in the Beyond CEP off, um, kind of the offline session with more information so that you can join this page too. 
Uh, we'd love you to partner with us. We'd love you to use our Flexbook 2.0, our brand new Common Core books, all of our science books. Um, we also would love you to be using the practice and quizzes with your students. We think this is truly the secret sauce to what makes CK12 personalized for each one of your students. Many schools have already adopted CK-12 as their full curriculum and are developing a very localized and personalized curriculum for their students. You should consider doing that too. Even creating a brand new Flexbook 2.0 for a non-STEM subject like we've seen Lindsay do today is a really great way to harness the power of digital on CK-12. Then, once everything's up and running, please send us an email. Sometimes we travel and are in your area. We'd love to come see CK12 in action at your school. And also, please share any feedback you have for us, including any information on student growth. So whether you have some results after having used CK12 for several years and you've noticed what's happening with improvement in test scores, this is the kind of thing we would love to see. And you're going to contact us for all of that at Jumpstart at ck12.org and we'll, um, we'll get back to you and, and we would love to you know, be your partner in this. We do have just a few more sessions left. I will be leading tomorrow a teaching strategies for using CK12. And this is really a um, hands-on, lots of ideas. It's kind of like if you've ever gone to a, a, a conference and there's like a session that like 50 great websites you should be using in your class. We're going to go over a lot of different teaching strategies. And uh, it's pretty fast paced, but in the end, I think you're going to have a lot that you feel comfortable implementing in your classroom immediately at the beginning of school. Also, we have Plix and Simulations, a really great session if you didn't, haven't seen it already. Learn about accessing CK12 interactives, both the Plix interactives and our powerful simulations on, and strategies on how to incorporate them into your class. As always, we would love your feedback, so please go to that tiny URL there and give us feedback on today's session. We are always looking to make our sessions better, and we improve them based on your feedback. Of course, there is the resource page that you can still download, um, which I think is really important. And if, finally, you have an assignment today with 13 questions. Remember, all the questions from the assignment are available ahead of the time in the lesson in the CEP book. So look through those questions, figure out your answers, because once you enter the assignment, you need to complete it all in one seating. So um, from all of us here, we uh, really appreciate you joining us today. We will stay on the line right now and answer all the remaining questions. I can see uh, Lindsay's been looking over them as I've wrapped this up. So we will answer your questions. But for those of you who are finishing up right now and leaving us, we say thanks so much. And we look forward to seeing you in our final couple lessons. And then once again, on our final session that's offline called Beyond CEP. All right, Lindsay, let's go answer a few more questions. All right, so a couple of people were trying to find that lacrosse book that I popped up earlier, and this goes back to how you can publish content on our site. Um, when we visited that classroom, again, he just pulled it up on his desktop and was saying that it was a thing that was in the works, but apparently they did not press publish on that button or on that book, so it is not searchable by CK12. So they likely just took the link, shared it with their athletes, you know, this is fine. It's, it's slightly selfish, as we like to say here at CK12. We much prefer that you publish so that everybody can find that book, but they're, they're likely just using that book in their context. They did not publish it for the whole world to see, and therefore it is not searchable on CK12. But they, you can take the URL and you can give people direct access to the book if they only have the URL. So that's why you're not finding it there. Um, let me share the screen and I'm gonna talk about, uh, somebody was asking about the embed code. Um, also somebody was saying, hey, I want to visit directly with somebody from El Paso. Again, if, if you need any introductions, email us at jumpstart at ck12.org and we will set that up. It might take a few days since we're a little, we're a little tied up right now with CEP, but come next week, we'll be happy to do some digital introductions for you if you email us. Um, Somebody was asking about embed codes, and I don't know if that was just you just really needed to see how the embed codes work, but I have a lesson pulled up. I'm in edit mode here, customize mode, and within our toolbar, we have an insert edit media option, 
And so this is where you would find a resource. I would go to YouTube right now, but it's really scary to just like go to YouTube and find a video and pull an embed code because who knows what I would show from YouTube. But um, anything with an embed code from, from Google Slides presentations to some of your third party resources that you love um, to, yeah, to, to Vimeo and YouTube. Uh, if you can pull the embed code, you paste it here and your video will show up right in the middle. Um, you can insert your own images. And we're just asking you about the source and credit, because again, that's part of our license of um, giving attribution to the appropriate people. Did we do it, Carl? Yeah, I think we did. I, um, we really appreciate all the great questions and the participation. That to me is what makes these live sessions so much fun. So we get to experience the learning together. So from all of us here in Palo Alto, we say have a great day and uh, we will talk to you all very soon.